Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Amityville haunting was based on the crimes of Ronald DeFeo, Jr. DeFeo shot and killed six members of his family, which included his parents and four siblings, on November 13, 1974. The home is on Ocean Avenue in Amityville, on Long Island. He was ultimately convicted of six counts of second-degree murder on November 21, 1975. He was sentenced to six sentences of 25 years to life on December 4, 1975. The bizarre crime scene continues to puzzle researchers today. All six victims were found face down in their beds with no signs of a struggle. There was no sign any had tried to help the others. DeFeo claimed he drugged his family. The police investigation concluded that the rifle had not been fitted with a sound suppressor and found no evidence of sedatives having been administered. This creates a tremendous field of question. Why didn't neighbors hear gunfire? Why didn't the family respond to the repeated gunfire? DeFaio had a volatile relationship with his father, but the motive for the killings remains unclear. After conviction, DeFaio continued to offer varying accounts of how and why the killings were carried out. He came, he opened the door, and he was screaming, come on, help me, somebody shot my mother and father. And everyone ran out of the bar, and that was it. They all took off. No, I had to stay, I was 10 anymore. They all jumped in his car and took off. Well, I, figured, I think they were just very sweet, very religious people, very family-minded people. And that's about all I could say. Very good, very generous, this type. I mean, very close with their children. Today, police combed the DeFeo's handsome three-story house for clues while divers explored the backyard swimming pool for the still unfound murder weapon. Police have been questioning the son, Ronald, and now say he is being, quote, safeguarded. Investigators say without explanation that they now feel young DeFeo was in the house at the time of the murders, but they're not yet considering him a suspect. And so we forth. have no suspect at this time. Is we have no indication of the motive at this time. What about Ronald uh, DeFeo, the son, the surviving son? Ronald is being safeguarded by the Suffolk, Suffolk County Police at this time. Why safeguarded? Why? Because the six members of the family dead, and we don't know why, and he's the sole remaining member. The auto suspect? not a suspect at this time. Few people in the neighborhood knew the family well, but those who did described them as close-knit. Well, I figured, I think they were just very sweet, very religious people, very family-minded people. element in the usual mass murder story which seems to be missing from this case. There's no sense of fear in this community. No feeling of a mass murderer on the loose. People we talk to seem to feel that whatever was the motive for this crime, it had something to do with the family. It's not something that's going to return to bother anyone else. In Amityville, Long Island, Phil Barno, News Center 4. It's beautiful. This is an amazing house. You're on George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into the house in December 1975. After 28 days, the family fled the home. They claimed they were terrorized by paranormal phenomena while living there. The Lutz family said a priest blessed the home before they moved in that winter, but they still found themselves tormented. In 2002, George told ABC News that the front door would slam in the middle of the night and an unseen force held him to the bed while he was forced to listen to his children's bed slam up and down on the floor. The entity in the house transformed his wife into an old woman and made her levitate, he said. George said he woke up at 3.15 every morning, which was the time Ron carried out his murders. The Lutz family claimed to frequently smell strange odors. They also saw green slime ooze out of the walls and keyholes. There were frigid cold spots in many areas of the home. A priest came to bless the house a second time but a demonic voice screamed, GET OUT! He told the Lutzes to never sleep in that room. Other activity associated with the home was a garage door opened and closed on its own. An invisible spirit frequently played with the kitchen knives. A pig-like creature with red eyes stared down at George and son Daniel from a window. 
George also said he woke up to see Kathy levitating off their bed. The sons, Daniel and Christopher, also said they levitated in their beds. What's the matter? I'm just seeing things, I guess. blown out of its frame and off its hinges. As you can see, it's the original door, solid as a rock, immovable, and quite innocent. My name is Patty Camarado. I was friends with Alison DeFeo, the girl who was murdered with the rest of her family here in 1974. This, I'm going to show you, is the mysterious red room that's so noted for in the book. This door, which they say was never here, was here, is here, always will be here, I suppose. This is the red room. Nothing more than a storage area where Allison and her brothers and I used to keep toys. Just red, you know? There's never any feeling of spirit presence or ghosts or any sort of thing like that. What do you think really happened on Ocean Avenue? Is the Amityville murder house haunted, or was it an elaborate hoax? Leave your answers in the comments. This is just a reminder to subscribe to enjoy our growing collection of paranormal content. Don't forget to like your favorite episode and ring the bell to be notified of new content. As always, thanks for watching.